Now this is uh, Blackroot Pool in Sutton Park, photograph I took three or four weeks ago on one um, Saturday stroll. Now there is a whole mass of trees and branches and twigs and stuff. I'm not going to put them all and I'll leave, I'll leave a lot of them out to, yeah, to suit the um, composition. I'll, I'll just play it by and see how it goes. So just a quick whiz through the materials. These are my paints. I've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. Uh, main brush, pretty much the only brush I use, large run around snake. I'll use the little brush as well at some stage no doubt. Clean water with a nice lip on so I can brush the excess water off and I got 15 by 11 watercolour paper. So a quick look at the photograph again and then uh, I'll get started. So I'm going to start off with the uh, big oak brush and this is just clean water all the way over. Incidentally, if this is your first time here, look to have you subscribe. I'm uh, trying to put out new videos every weekday, Monday to Friday, so subscribe now, never miss a thing. This is just raw sienna. Just to add a bit of background colour. Pretty much haphazardly all the way down to the bottom of the page. A little clean of the brush. Let's put on some burnt umber. Always have these in the same position so I know instinctively where to go for any particular colour. It's always bottom left. Bottom left for me is burnt umber. Some water down there so it's just a bit of blue. Bit of blue, that's going to be the water, and then just a little bit of cloud in the sky. I'm just going to lizard and crimson, pines grey, and that's just going to bit more crimson, just a different shape. Not so much, just something there going on. Uh, just a little bit down below. That'll do, that's all I want for that. Now, looking at the photograph, I can see on the far, far side of the uh, of Black Root Pool, there are some trees. So, I'm just going to pop them in. Oh, that's a bit too blue, that is. and then there's a little bit of green in there. I'm just pulling down the reflection as I'm going along. I'm trying to keep it level. see what's going on over here. Um, I try not to have it all at the same height, it looks a bit um, artificial, so let's just make it a bit taller on this side. Pull down that reflection. Now the paper stretched a little bit, so I'm just going to hold this paper flat against the board, so I'm good to go again. Um, just the odd little flick here with the fingernail. Nothing in the, uh, don't forget to reflect what you've done above, down below. Don't want to overdo it too much. Right, now what I want to do quick before the paper dries too much, so I didn't really wet it a lot, is just get some, hang on, first, just get a little bit of water on the palette there, so I've got something to mix. Mix with. I'm just making a. a sort of tree trunk colour. These are all the uh, 
I said I wasn't going to put in every twig and branch, so I'm, I'm just suggesting a few distant trunks, putting down the reflections. A bit more water on the palette, too much, never mind. Yeah, I'll put too much water on the palette. I'm just going to have to soak that up a little bit. A bit of brown, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green. And I'm just going to go So obviously these are reflections of these distant trunks I'm putting up. I didn't wet the paper as much as I meant to, so it's almost dried actually on this left hand side, but it doesn't matter, I can still, I can still work with that, it's not a problem. So they're the most distant ones, I might just put a, just a hint of a few. and stuff going on up there. Don't forget to reflect what you've done above. Very little paint on the brush. So now I can go over into these sort of like a sensitive area. This will be where you can see through the trees, this little gap there, where the light's reflecting off the water. This will be our sort of viewpoint through the foliage and all the twigs and branches. So I know I can paint over that with this brush and I know not a lot of paint's going to come off. So that's all the distant ones. What I'm going to do now is, I'll try and do it in three layers. You've got the most distant ones done when the paper's quite wet. And then the sort of middle, middle ground ones where the paper's dried a little bit more and you can see a few more of the twigs and branches. Again, don't forget the reflections. Switch the high brush in a minute. Well, that's as far as I can go now, really, with the, uh, with the little brush. I want some bigger trunks in now, so I'm going to do those. First, I'm going to get rid of all this water on the uh, palette, it's too much. That's a rough. There's enough water in the brush as it is. I'm just mixing burnt umber, ultramarine, and let's just get a few bigger, bigger ones up there. So these are the ones that are a little bit closer to us, so a stronger mix. And then I'll put, I'll put about half a dozen in there, I'll start putting a few branches on here and there. All pretty loose, nothing, um, no sort of fine detail going on. Don't forget the reflections down the bottom. over on the left hand side. One up there like that, one up there over there. Just a little 
brush. That's a sort of middle grain. So what I'm going to do next is just define where this full grain shore is. So first, give that a quick straighten off, and then I'm going to just look at the uh, reference picture. I'm just going to go. Clean the brush, and I just want to just a very light, bit of raw sienna, bit of bit of lemon yellow, and your very light light tone. I'm just going to work out where this shoreline is. So it's just up there like that. It goes across there like that. And I'm sort of down. Now most a lot of this is going to be covered up, really. We do have artistic license, we can move things around if we want to. So. This is a bit of grass running there. This is where I was just stood on this grass. It was very, very, it was almost swamp like trying to find a good spot to take a photograph. I had my walking boots on, but even now I think I needed wellies really. So that's roughly where the land lies. So what I'll do, give that a quick dry. Actually, what I might do first is uh, I can't see too many leaves in the photograph, but I'll just put the odd one in, just here and there. So I've just dried the brush and just scuffed it up like that, just so, so I can get some sort of random leaves. I've just got a bit of raw sienna, a bit of a bit of ultramarine, just a, just a little bit of foliage, just add a bit of colour to the tree, not too much. That's what I'm going to do for that. The next one I'm going to do, I want a really strong mix now because I'm putting, putting these four grain big, big trunks. So I'm doing a bit of ultramarine, a bit of burnt umber. Right, and we've got, there's a big one over there. Divide up into the sea. Touch more watch, just dip the very corner of the brush into the water. So there's one behind that. There's the one in there, just fills in this nice this gap in the corner nicely. And also do have got another one. Now in the photograph it's about there, but I'm just, I'm just going to move it over I think. Just move it over, just so it suits the composition a bit better. I'm going to have that one just running straight off the bottom of the page. Make it a little bit wider. Um, now I've got two there, almost parallel, which I don't like, so just to break it up. Break it up. I think I'll, I'll stick a one there that goes behind that one. Like that. Just to make it 
Switch to the little brush again. Same colours, bit of brown, bit of blue. Smaller branches, twigs, and things coming off there. Also, a few, few things coming from right above there. You can't, you can't see where they originate from. It's all coming straight off above, above the uh, above the painting. trees there, that's what seems to be in me there. Just filling these. Oh that looks a bit bad because it's grounded now, there's a big gap there. Um just debate whether to stick something in this corner but I might I might just leave that as it is. So what I'm going to do is put some shadows in. shadows just a little bit of foliage not so much just to give the impression that there's something there so again I've just cleaned the brush scuffed it up again on the tea towel just so the hairs are all frayed all over the place so it makes a nice random leaves so I'm just gonna go a bit of bit of raw sienna a bit of lemon yellow I've got a few more of these in a bit of blue a bit of yellow, a bit of pines grey, some darker leaves. That's all I'm going to do for that. Right, shadows. So, if we imagine the sun. Pick where you like sources, so we say somewhere around there, imagine the sun's about there. I'm going to go a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue, sort of grey, shadowy colour. So I'm going to pick, say the sun's there, so the sun's there, so if we follow the line across, and here's the first tree, shadow coming across there, just darken that a little bit as well, so again down there, follow the line. the shadow and then another one so if we just follow the line again another tree over here shadow going behind those trees and there's another one there you can hardly see this is there and a few shadows off there um, obviously got shadows off these big trees there Right, 
move it over to the other side, and then like this. Shadow up there, and another one. Draw this brush up a bit and then just need a bit of just something good on the foreground. Just foreground, I like, I love um, some big dollops, big dollops of paint. Just a grasses or something going on. Focal points I need, so I'm, I'm just looking for a little man. I've just got a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, using a small brush. Little man, where's he going to be stood? Um, Following the shadow lines, Not to figure out a little bird, little bird up there flying away. I'm going to call that one finished. Fine. I always think it's the opposite corner where your, your focal point is up here. Up your name, I mean, not right in the corner because if you bang it, you want to see it. I'm going to call that one finished. That's my very quick impression of um, Blackroot Pool in Sun Park. So let's see what it looks like with the uh, main sun. So there's the paint, it looks a bit better now it's framed. So compared to the photograph, you can see the first thing you notice, I've just opened this area up completely. So we can see right right through the scene to the uh, the trees on the far side of the lake. The first thing I did was the sky. Absolutely nothing happening here really on this dull day. You can see a bit of bit of raw sienna, a bit of blue sky between the between, and also a bit of lizarding crimson panes, grey clouds there, just to add a bit of interest. Then we got these far trees on the uh, other side of the lake, and you can see the reflections in the water below. I've, probably, I've tried to vary it as much as I can and pull down at the same time. A um, little bit of a fingernail scraping there to suggest the odd tree trunk here and there. Mixed it was to try and work out where the land is, so I just I just put that in very uh, very light in tone with a bit of raw sienna and, and uh, lemon and yellow. Just to work out where all the uh, all the trees and where the shadows were going to go. This is the big one. I left that one out just so we could see through the scene a little bit better. And just add these like two great big whoppers over here on the right hand side to help frame it. A couple of little ones on the left just to frame this view through to the lake. Then it was just a case of selecting where your light source is up here and then just popping your shadows in, just following the line of the trees. Little figure there, little focal point, man walking his dog. A couple of little shadows here on this left hand side and then just a few dibs and dabs here with the ache, just to give a bit of texture to this foreground. 
so I'll make it a bit more interesting. So that's it for today's painting. I hope you like that. Um, you can help me out by liking, sharing, and commenting below. Uh, as I said, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. New videos uh, every weekday, so you won't miss a thing. Um, keep practicing, happy painting, and uh, I'll see you again soon.